friends. I'm so excited. I'm gonna talk about two of my favorite things today, dating and Enneagram. How do you use the Enneagram personality system to navigate the different kinds of men that you can date? So I'll just make a few disclaimers. Number one, I'm going to make a lot of generalizations. Number two, I'm going to objectify male celebrities. We're gonna look at some male celebrity photos to explain the different personality types. Number three, I am highly caffeinated. So I, you have been warned about all of these things. So the Enneagram is a personality system and there are nine different types. There's lots of books on the Enneagram. The wisdom of the Enneagram is great as well as the complete Enneagram. I really like this second book. It's a little more spiritual, but it gives you uh, counter types. If you can't figure out which personality type you are, you don't feel like you fit into one of these nine boxes very well, then I highly recommend that second book. I found the Enneagram to be so helpful for understanding people, understanding people that might not be like yourself. What are you attracted to and what are you also signing up for that comes with each personality type? Because there is no perfect person where they are gonna have nothing that bugs you, nothing that irritates you. So let's get into the nine types. Number one, number one, woo! Personally very drawn to this type and then it does not work out so well for me long-term relationship wise. Oh, this is Richard Madden from Game of Thrones, Rob Stark. Rest in peace. Type one is mostly known as the reformer. They are highly principled, they have great morals, clear, they are focused and precise. Might even take you on the best date you've ever been on and they know it's the best date that you've ever been on because it's so well planned. Now, the downside of this type is that they can be a little bit controlling and there's usually a right and a wrong. So sometimes you feel like you're a little in trouble, especially if you're my personality type. So you may break their rules or they might get mad at you or upset with you for um, something that you had no idea was a problem. Number two, the helper. Aw, twos. Sweet, relational, they make eye contact, maybe even for a little long. They hold the hug, they are helpful, they are sweet and kind and generous. They can even be devotional. The downside is they can be people pleasing. They may have they may be signing up for things and helping everybody else and then coming home to you and complaining about it and being resentful. So sometimes they can say yes when they mean no and everyone will think they're amazing and then at home they're kind of tired and grumpy and resentful because they've given everything to everybody else and not to themselves. They have a hard time taking alone time and taking care of themselves. Number three, ooh, ah, the achiever. They look good, they sound good. Everything about them is just mm, perfect. They are charming, they are driven, they get a lot done. Go to the family event and they're just like on it. And the downside is they can be a little superior. They can be arrogant, they can be image conscious and vain. So there's a little bit of like, are you gonna be a power couple with me or not? and let me help you and fix you so that you are. Also work a lot and work long hours and you know, you are, you may be number two to their work. The four, the individualist, the creative, the artist, dreamy, sexy, deep. They feel, they are sensitive, they are tuned in and they can talk to you and feel you and make out with you for hours. Downside is, if you have anywhere to go at any point, uh, you might not make, it might even take them a long time to finish their sentence about how they feel. And then they want to know how you feel about it. And then they need to take that in. We'll get to my personality type soon, but I'm not a four. They are processors, deep feelers, deep thinkers, and the downside is a little self-absorbed. They can be a little bit like, what about me? What about me? What about me? So it can sometimes take a long time to get anywhere. The five. Okay, 
We can't spend too long talking about the five because they get embarrassed and shy. Sometimes it's called the observer, but um, it also is called the investigator. They want to know why. They want, they're asking a million questions. They are really smart. They are the smartest person in the room, but you might not know it because they tend to be more reserved, more shy, more quiet and introverted. This is Tom York from Radiohead, if you didn't know. Another five, another different kind of five is Mark Zuckerberg, right? So these tech, tech people, the fives are great because you will have plenty to talk about. You will have plenty to think about. You will be learning and growing. If you like getting a little bit more of the attention, they, they tend to give attention really well, high quality attention because they tend to, to really be thinking about what's going on and thoughtful. The downside with the five is that they can be highly mysterious and secretive. You very rarely know what's really going on. You may have to ask, not once, not twice, but three times to know what are they feeling? What are they thinking? And if you want a relationship to move forward, you may be doing it yourself. They think really fast, but they're not moving through the world uh, doing things fast. They're more studying and getting mastery and deepening their knowledge and their wisdom. And so sometimes relationally, it doesn't uh, move forward with lightning speed. Six. Ah, oh, six. Okay. The six is called the loyalist. So ding, ding, ding. If you're looking for a committed relationship and a baby daddy now, a six is a great way to go. They are committed. They are secure. They have got it organized and ready. They tend to like spreadsheets when they're packing. They are not going anywhere and they tend to want families and relationships and committed ones. The downside is they get a little anxious, a little suspicious. They can be a little high strung, so they can kind of get a little negative sometimes. They're pretty practical, so you know, you run the risk of a little bit of boredom sometimes. What are you wanting and what are you willing to sign up for? Because nobody is perfect. Everybody has a downside. You've got a downside. It's good to know which personality type you are and what's your downside and work on it and become more and more healthy, but you're never gonna be perfect. There are things that your partner is going to be signing up for and you are going to be signing up for. So just know what you're signing up for, accept it and take it as a learning opportunity. All right, three more types, ready? Seven. Can you guess which personality type I am? The seven is the life of the party. Energetic, enthusiastic, very chatty and excited, adventurous, spontaneous. There is a downside. They're not the, they're not the quickest to commit. And if, you, if they do commit, they might change their mind tomorrow. They are not the most obvious choice for a committed relationship. They tend to be more of a fling, more of a fun time, a great summer relationship because they will take you on lots of activities and they will buy you things and they will smile and laugh the whole time. But when it comes time to commit to a relationship, it can get a little hairy. Every type can grow out of these unhealthy behaviors, but you will still experience a little bit of it and flavors of it, even with the healthiest person who's in therapy. As amazing as George Clooney is and as much as we all want to be with him. He took a long time to get married. Just, just, you know, presenting the facts. Eight, eight, eight. This is Idris Elba. If you don't know him, you're crazy. He's in every movie ever and his beautiful voice comes through and you just know Idris Elba has got it handled. He is an eight. This is the challenger. They are direct. They are powerful. They are strong. They are leaders and they are confrontational as hell. You have to have either a thick skin or a willingness to speak up with the eight. So that's the downside is that they can be a little bit controlling and dominant and opinionated. And so if you're a real wispy willow, you're gonna get tossed around by the eight in good ways and in bad. Say what you mean and say what you want and fight back and challenge back because if you don't, they will run right over you. Last but not least is the nine. The nine. The nine is where the whole personality system comes together because the nine is the peacemaker. They bring harmony. You know a nine because you always feel pretty at ease around them, pretty good, pretty peaceful, and easygoing and fun. They tend to be funny. A lot of dads in movies and in shows and cartoons tend to be nines. Homer Simpson is a nine. 
Downside of the nine is that they can be a little bit lazy, a bit of a couch potato. They're not gonna be the one that makes a lot of plans or drives forward anything strongly. And so you may have to be a little bit more of a leader with the nine and you might have to say what you want and what you think and you might have to lead them because they can sometimes be taking a nap. So those are the nine types. Find out what you want and what you like and then make it known to your friends, to yourself, to spirit world, whatever you want. This is what I'm looking for and I am totally willing to sign up for these things and when I see them, I'm not gonna judge them and break up with them. I'm gonna work with them. That's your speedy Enneagram system when it comes to dating. I hope this is helpful. And if you like this video, subscribe. That would be super fun. The more the merrier, which is very type seven of me to say.